Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. Romans 3.24 teaches that we are justified as a gift. A gift. A gift. It's a gift from God. We are justified as a gift by His grace. We don't earn it or deserve it. It's who He is, not who we are. We are justified as a gift by His grace, again, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3.28 says that we are justified by faith apart from from the works of the law. When I was younger, you know, more than 35 years ago, I had that goofy notion. I had that strange idea that I was saved by works and uh, that had to be corrected. And it was corrected when I got into the word, but we are justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Salvation is free and it is received freely. Notice again, verse uh, Romans 4, 5, to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. You see, our salvation was accomplished entirely by Jesus at the cross when he shed his blood at Calvary. For according to he, uh, 1 Peter 1, 19, we were redeemed with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ is again the coin of the heavenly realm that the Father accepts as payment for our sin debt. It's the only currency He will accept. And because our salvation was accomplished at the cross, it means there's nothing for us to pay, nothing at all. Salvation is a gift given freely to us who don't deserve it. You see, that's called grace. And I love grace. <laughs> Boy, do I love grace. Grace is unmerited favor. It is that undeserved love. It is that unwarranted, uh, it is that undeserved kindness and unwarranted love, that unearned generosity, that unprovoked goodness. How many ways can I explain that so that it communicates? I sometimes struggle in my words to communicate these ideas, so hopefully this is getting through. Now, Scripture again reveals Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and you'll notice there's repetition in my wording here, that we are saved uh, by grace. He says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Again, salvation is never what we do for God, rather it's what He's done for us by sending His Son into the world to live a righteous life and to die a penal, substitutionary, atoning death on the cross in our place. Penal, he bore the penalty for our sin. Substitutionary, he died in our place. And 1 Peter, again, 3.18 tells us that Christ died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God. Our faith needs to be in Jesus alone. This, of course, is the Jesus of the Bible, for no other Jesus will do. A false Jesus does not save anyone, such as the Jesus of Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness. The, the Jesus of Scripture, again, is the second member of the Trinity, God the Son, who added perfect humanity to himself 2,000 years ago, was born of a virgin. Earlier I said Luke 1.28, it's Luke 1.26 to 35, was born of a virgin in the prophesied city of Bethlehem, a descendant of David and Abraham. Uh, he was born as the Jewish Messiah who lived a sinless life. Notice 2 Corinthians 5.21. Uh, he knew no sin, um, who was tempted in all ways like we are, yet without sin, who committed no sin. Uh, and he says, you know uh, that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. So he's the sinless Son of God. That, and he willingly went to the cross and died in our place. Again, John 10, 18, he says, no one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. And so he willingly went to the cross and atoned for our sins and then was raised again on the third day. Acts 10, 40 and 41, it says, but God raised him up on the third day. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. And we do believe that Jesus died and rose again. And when he rose, he rose never to die again. Again, Romans 6, 9, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. You see, this is the Jesus of Scripture. This is the Jesus of Scripture. 
the one who saves those who trust solely in him for salvation, for no one else can save. Scripture says of Jesus, John 3, 15, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. John 3, 16, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 18, he who believes in him is not judged. John 3, 36, he who believes in the Son has eternal eternal life. John 6, 47, truly, truly, I say to you, uh, he who believes has eternal life. John eleven twenty five. 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. John um, 10, uh, that was John, oh, John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John 5, 12, He who has the Son has the life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. Now, these passages, and there's been some repetition here, and that's generally how I teach. These passages emphasize that eternal life is obtained through belief in Jesus Christ. Salvation is exclusively in Jesus so those who reject Jesus as Savior will spend eternity away from God in the lake of fire. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 says these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And Revelation 20.15 says, And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So to be saved, one must turn to Christ alone for salvation and trust Him 100% to accomplish what we cannot to rescue us from eternal damnation. Uh, we must believe the gospel uh, message that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that He was buried, and that He was raised again on the third day according to the scriptures. Acts 16.31, knowing the good news uh, of what uh, of what God accomplished for us. So knowing what God accomplished for us through the cross, we must then believe in the Lord Jesus, just like the Philippian jailer did. We must exercise faith in Christ, and we must trust exclusively in Him. Acts 4.12, again, for there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. And we should not look to ourselves for salvation, not at all. We should not look to ourselves for salvation, for there is nothing in us that can save us, nothing at all. Christ alone saves, no one else, nothing more. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. 